is no exception. I also want to greet those of, us, those of you who are joining us online today, wherever you are. May God bless you as well. Good to see you. We always start with the children. Let's get started. Come on up. Let's do some talking, children. Here we go. A lot to talk about. What a nice day we have today, huh? Picture perfect day. It doesn't get any better. Today, I'm going to talk about chairs. Yeah, chairs. We have, we have a boys club up here. Are there any girls? <laughs> um, we're going to talk about chairs. And if you look around the, the worship area here, how many different kinds of chairs do you see? Take a look. Different kinds of chairs. How about the ones behind you? Look over there. You see those, those padded chairs there? Well, you know what? If, if you want to serve as an acolyte, that's the person who lights the candles, you get to sit in one of those chairs. There's chairs that I sit in over there. Uh, Artie, you have a special chair. Artie's chair actually moves, unlike the other chairs, right? You, you got to... Uh, you know, that's a great idea, Artie. I, I could do that. Hook, up, hook up motors to all the other chairs, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Let's do that. So, so Artie's got a special chair, and also Artie's chair goes up and, up and down. I've seen it. Sometimes he's, sometimes he's in the upper deck, and it's like you're closer to God then. Is that what's going on? And I've seen a, the reclining option. So, look, can, can you have reclining chairs for all of us? Would that be good? I'll, I'll work on okay. That way you can truly sleep during the sermon. It'll be a great idea. So, look, look around at the different chairs. We have those chairs. We, uh, already sitting in a chair. Did you ever think of this as a chair? Look, right here. Look. This is a special kind of chair that churches have. Does anybody know what you call that kind of a chair? Good, Levi, good answer. Pew, P-E-W, that's a pew. Look, we also have these padded chairs here. They're a little bit more comfortable to sit on, right, than, than the hard pews, but we also have cushions on the hard pews too. Uh, are there any other kinds of chairs? Oh, I saw another kind of chair. Take a look. What did I not mention yet? Piano. The piano, yes. We call that a piano bench, right, Mrs. Sicaro? You call that a bench, and there's also a bench behind the organ over there, but I see another kind of chair that we didn't, we didn't uh, indicate yet. Look around. What, what's the other kind of chair? Look around. Ooh, tough one. Stumped the audience here. How about the chairs all the way in the back? Yeah, there are chairs we sit in for the refreshments after church. We sit there. Other kind of chairs. The reason I bring this up is I want to talk to you about a chair in heaven. Do you know what that's called? It says Jesus sits in a special chair in heaven. What do you think? Yeah. It's a throne. Good job, Patrick. That's called a throne. And I want you to think about this because kings and queens sit on thrones, right? You, you, you've, all, you've heard that, right? Well, Jesus is called the king of all the kings. He's above all. The, so he has a special chair that he sits in in heaven. It's called a throne. And someday when we get to heaven, I hope we'll be able to see that. I hope I'll be able to like, go to that special area where the throne of God is. That's going to be amazing, huh? A big, big uh, king's chair. Uh, I'll bet it's, it sparkles. Maybe it's made out of gold, right? And it's going to be a, a beautiful chair called a throne. And he deserves that because he's called the king of kings and lord of lords. He's the master of all the universe. That's what he is. So can, can we thank God for that special chair called the throne of Jesus? Let's, let's pray together. Everybody pray. Lord, we thank you. We adore you. We look forward to the day when we'll see you sitting on your high chair, your high throne your wonderful place of power and majesty. You rule with love, though, and we, we know that it will be a loving chair and a warming chair, and we thank you, Lord, for that special chair called the Heavenly Throne. And in your great name we pray, amen, amen. Hi, sweetheart. Uh, so just think about that. Someday we might be able to see 
I hope we can go to that special area of heaven where we can see the throne of God. How about that? That'd be amazing, huh? To look at that. Well, thanks for coming to church today. I'm delighted you're here. Uh, Miss Aaron has a wonderful lesson. And when you walk down the hall, you're going to walk down a beautiful carpeted hallway. It's beautiful now. Did you see it yet? It's beautiful, yeah. Well, have a wonderful day. I, I don't want to hold you up anymore. God bless you. And now we'll have Mrs. Sicaro offering the prelude. Thank you, Kathy. If you are able to stand, could you please stand for the confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. I invite you now for a moment for silent reflection and prayer. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. Our cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins, Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please remain standing for our first hymn today.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated now as we share our assigned scripture verses for today. Quoting from the Psalms, this passage from Hebrews emphasizes that Jesus, the one through whom God created everything and who sits at God's right hand, is also the one who experienced human suffering and death in order to blaze the path of salvation for us. Or salvation, sorry. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. We, when he had made for unification for her sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere what are human beings that you are mindful to, of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little wilder, while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do not see, see but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was paid lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It is fitting that God, for whom and through whom, all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings for the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father for this reason jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters saying i will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. If you are able, this concludes today's reading. If you are able, please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Jesus announced and enacted in history the new reality of God's surprising activity. These two stories demonstrate this new reality. Women and children are accepted and valued, not dismissed as inferior to adult men. St. Mark writes, Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus answered them, Well, what did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 
So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that they might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat, everyone. Well, once again, good morning to you. This is a beautiful day. The sun is shining here in this part of the world. It's a happy environment. And yet now I have to preach on the negative topic of divorce. I got to share a little something with you. You know these scripture inserts that come in your bulletin every Sunday? They're called Celebrate Scripture Inserts. I don't select these verses. These verses each week are selected by the World Council of Churches, and they repeat every three years. There's a three-year cycle. So the uh, scripture verses we have today will come around again three years from now. It's a three-year cycle. Just wanted to let you know, because I don't particularly enjoy preaching about divorce, and yet divorce is mentioned in our gospel reading, and we need to clear this up. It's probably the most misunderstood Bible passage in all of Scripture. So today we're going to unpack that, we're going to look at it, uh, kind of dissect it, and look at what it means for us today. First of all, let's look at the landscape of divorce in this country right now. Did you know that according to Forbes.com, all new marriages, of all new marriages, 43% of those new marriages will end in divorce. It's almost 50% of all new marriages in the United States will end in divorce. Now, this is sad because this afternoon I'm going to perform a wedding in Sussex County. And what do I say to the couple? Congratulations, but you only have a 50-50 shot at this, you know. <laughs> really? Uh, but it's true. 43% of all new marriages end in divorce. Now, what about second marriages? What's the divorce rate among second marriages? It is 60%. So the divorce rate is higher for a second marriage than it is for a first marriage. What about third marriages? Let's take a look at that. What's the divorce rate for third marriages? 73%. Now, don't you think it should be the other way around? Don't you think it, the higher number should be the first marriage? But the more marriages one has, the greater percentage likelihood that that uh, marriage will end in divorce. I find that counterintuitive, but that is actually the statistic. Again, in case you missed it, First marriages, 43% will end in divorce. Second marriages, 60% will end in divorce. Third marriages, 73%. What did Jesus say? Jesus had some harsh words against divorce because of the divorce practices of his day. Now, let's take a look, first of all, what Jesus said. The words appear on your monitor. Jesus said, what God has joined together let no one separate. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And earlier in the Old Testament, God says, I hate divorce. Pretty strong, right? It is strong because the divorce practices in the days of Jesus were incredibly abusive toward women. And that's why Jesus criticized the divorce practices then. Let me paint a picture of what it was like. In the first century, women did not choose who they were going to marry. 
Women were presented to the men. Women were treated as property. Women were treated as slaves and servants to their husbands. Women had no say into how the household was to be run. Only the man made those decisions. Women in the first century were not allowed to work outside of the home. They weren't allowed to have employment. They weren't allowed to run for public office. They were, they were not respected in society. Women were second-class citizens who were bossed around primarily by their husbands. And let me say that there was a lot of abuse in those marriages. There was physical abuse in a lot of those marriages. There was psychological abuse in a lot of those marriages. There was sexual abuse in a lot of those marriages in the first century. Now, here is the abomination. The abomination is that a woman could not seek any kind of relief if she was being abused. In the first, in the first century, she could not run to an attorney. She could not run away from home. And if she did, she was rounded up and brought back into the home. And her parents would say, you must be a bad wife because your husband doesn't like you. It's all your fault. That's what the woman was told. And not only that, but a woman could, could release, a, a man rather, could release his wife with a certificate for trivial reasons. I'm tired of being married to you. You're out of here. Uh, your cooking isn't good enough. You're out of here. And when she was thrown out of her husband's home, she had to go back to her parents to get verbally abused because she didn't live up to the expectations of her demanding husband. There were no custody awards. The man had the children, so the woman had to be cast out of her home, away from her children, considered a failure, even if she was abused by her husband. And men were allowed to simply write off their women, just cast them out and get a new one. Jesus looked at the abusive practice of divorce. And of course, Jesus was harshly critical because Jesus knew that women were not equal partners in the marriage, women were not treated fairly, and women had no legal recourse whatsoever. And Jesus actually spoke up for the rights of women. That's why he was so critical of the divorce practices of that day. What about now? What does the Lutheran Church say about divorce? We're all part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and let's see what the Lutheran Church says. They adopted a statement in 2009, and the words are up on your monitor if you want to follow along with me. This is a, a pronouncement from the Evangelical Lutheran Church. It says, the longing for connection can render human beings susceptible to pain, isolation, and harm. Many experience neither love nor trust within marriage, harming another emotionally, physically, or spiritually, including through the misuse or abuse of power, is a profound injury. The Lutheran Church goes on in the statement, and it reads like this, this church recognizes that in some situations, the trust upon which marriage is built becomes so deeply damaged or is so deeply flawed that the marriage itself must come to a legal end. And they go on and say, this church does not treat divorce lightly, nor does it disregard the responsibilities of marriage. However, in such situations, it provides support to the people involved and all who are affected. Now, this is a, a, a pronouncement from our national church body in the year 2009, and this is still the definitive statement of the Lutheran Church. And there's one more part, and I will read this. It's up on the monitor. Divorced individuals are encouraged to avail themselves of pastoral care to be assured of God's presence, forgiveness, and healing, and to remain in the communion of the church 
recognizing the all-encompassing mercy of God. This church will provide supportive pastoral care to those who are divorced. This is why I love the Lutheran Church. We are compassionate people. We are not judging. We're not saying that in a divorce, you're the bad person or you're the bad person. No, the Lutheran Church realizes that divorces happen. They're painful and they're very, very painful for children who are caught in the crossfire of the divorce. Let me be blunt. In my opinion, divorce is living hell. I've been there. I've been in the middle of it, so I'm speaking from experience. But in the living hell, you need the compassion of Jesus Christ. Divorced people need to know that Jesus still loves them, that Jesus will support them, that Jesus will guide them through this very, very hellish time in their lives. And divorced people need to know that the church body, the body of Christ, is there with loving arms and non-judgmental support. I'm say that again, non-judgmental support. That's what we stand for. That's who we are. We are children of God, and we love one another. And if something devastating happens, like a divorce, we are there for all parties involved, as we should be. Thanks be to God. This is what I'm saying. Now, chances are, you're sitting here today, either you are divorced, or you know someone close to you who is divorced. So you know the need for compassion toward those who are going through this nightmare of an experience. And the compassion we offer is beyond words. Did you know that there are some Christian groups, not our Lutheran church, but there are some Christian groups who actually exclude divorced people from communion initially? They actually say you are divorced and you, you cannot even receive communion. Now imagine the judgmental exclusion of that statement. The Lutheran church says if you're divorced, that's all the more reason you need communion. You need grace. You need healing. You need love. You need support. You need encouragement. You need hope. And Jesus will always be there for you. That's what we say. And we say it again today. Thank God our church will never condemn divorced people. We will never reject divorced people. And we will never isolate divorced people. Thanks be to God. Jesus never rejected those who came to him for love and encouragement. Let's think about this. Think about someone you know who is either going through a divorce right now or has been divorced and is trying to get life back together again. Can you please pray for those people and pray and offer your listening support to each and every one? Let's pray right now. Can you, can you bow your heads with me and we'll pray together? Oh, Lord, our God, we know that divorce is so devastating and we know that it's so prevalent in this country. We know that hearts are broken we know that children are questioning what's going on. We know that lives are devastated by this. So we pray, Lord, for healing. We pray for your grace upon every troubled heart. We pray for restoration and renewal for those who are losing faith. And we pray that healing will bring a fresh new chapter into the soul of each and every divorced person today. We ask your compassion, and we ask that we can express that compassion to one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
If you are able, could you please stand? And let's proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Could you please be seated now? As once again, we invite our spirited choir to come forward for this Sunday's anthem.
Before I start the prayer, would you please allow me to ask, do we have two communion assistants today? Raise your hand if you're a communion assistant. We have one. Do we have two? Thank you. Okay, just wanted to double check. Okay. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you are able, could you please stand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Each week I remind you that Holy Communion is available for everyone. It makes no difference what Christian background you bring. Simply come up and receive a wafer, and then you'll be directed to these pre-filled glasses. The darker liquid is wine, the lighter color Liquid is grape juice. If you prefer a gluten-free wafer, they're located in that small candy dish right in front of the organ. And please, follow the instructions of your ushers. You may be seated at this time. If you are able, could you please stand? Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you keep you, and give you peace. Amen.
Hallelujah. Everybody have a seat. We have a few announcements, very important ones to give. Working her way to the microphone is Joyce Mall. She's our council president. Joyce, I want to say something that's not up on the announcement board. It goes without saying, but I, I sincerely offer this. If you're here worshiping and you feel that you're unable to ambulate forward for communion, we can bring communion to you wherever you're sitting in your pew. Simply alert the ushers when you come in uh, and tell them that you need communion brought to you and we're more than happy yes, to do that, definitely, okay? Definitely. Yeah, so, so please keep that in mind. And without any further ado, Joyce, tell us okay, what's going on. Thank right? you. All right. I want to thank JT for doing a great job on scripture today and your hair looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we want to let you know that if you want to have your children's birthday party at the church, it's available. We have the miniature golf downstairs. You could either see myself or Pastor. I was wondering, along with some people in the church, how many people would be interested in joining our marketing team by a show of hands? Okay. If you are interested, please um, be up front after church today. Come up and talk with me about it. Welcome. the women's group is having a meeting next Sunday after service in the blue room. Uh, always bring your coffee and your cakes with you. Uh, we do need more people to sign up for scripture reading and for doing the offering. There's sign-up sheets in the back. Um, I could give you a two-minute training on it if you like. We also offer an offering on our website. And I think our website is right up on here. You could do it once a month, weekly. Um, we also have our Lunch and Learn coming up next Wednesday, October 16th at noon. <clears throat> bring your sandwich with you, bring your snacks with you. We have coffee and we have tea. And this coming Saturday, we have Blessing of the Animals at uh, noon, I'm sorry, at 11 a.m. right here in the church. Uh, Pastor will be here blessing all the animals. Does anybody have announcements, Ellen, about the coat drive? Thank you. Good morning. The coat drive is in operation now, so you can bring them any time in the next couple of weeks and leave them either on the bench if the church is closed or if you can bring them into the church. I put a sign on the middle closet in the hall there. You can put them in that closet. And while I'm here, I'd just like to give you um, a quick announcement from our friends at Norbu. They're having their encampment this weekend, and they'll be there today from 10 until 5. They have wonderful... Um, Krumkaga and Krunsakaga and all kinds of um, Norwegian pastries for sale and they are selling hot dogs for lunch and there are quite a few vendors there uh, in the parking lot areas if you'd like to look around and see what they have also. They would love to have you come down. All are welcome. And Norbu's right across the street. Right across Green Pond Road. Um, there's a sign on Green Pond Road there and you can um, find a parking place somewhere. Find a parking place somewhere there and um, Join them for a little while, if you'd like. Yes. We recorded um, Rise and Shine, the song that we're singing for the blessing for the animals. We'll also be in church um, next Sunday. So parents, you'll be receiving an email from Miss Erin, a video of the motions and the songs so that they can practice it. And also, I gotta talk to Don about the slides that I have for it. Thank you. Pastor? Yes, uh, I wanted to welcome a beautiful black lab that's in the back of the church. We have a service dog joining us today named Salem, so we welcome Salem. I know uh, generally you're not supposed to pet service dogs, but if we get permission, just, just let us know, okay? All right, that's great. Welcome Salem. Sa and next week, great segue, we have the blessing of the animals for next Saturday at 11, so maybe Salem can join us. Uh, I was asked to give a very brief report on certain financial issues. Uh, a lot of you were asking about the Spring Festival. The numbers are now up there on the, the monitor screens. As you can see, 
Uh, the total income was close to seven thousand, uh, less the total expenses, uh, which is five thousand three hundred and twenty dollars and change, uh, for a gross profit of uh, almost fifteen hundred dollars. This is the result of the spring festival that we had on June the eighth. Um, we did designate a charity to receive ten percent of the proceeds, or approximately ten percent and that was paid to rise up. Uh, a little less than $125 uh, was designated even before the festival to go to rise up. So uh, as you can see, the, the net profit for our church then comes to uh, about 13 and a half, uh, I'm sorry, $1,354.44. Uh, we do have another slide, I believe. Some profit sales, a lot of you were asking, where did the money come from uh, for the festival? Well, food sales, we, we received a little over $2,000. Then there was the tricky tray, uh, over $800 registrations. Now this is the uh, car show registrants as well as the vendors, a little over $900. And beer and wine, uh, a little less than $200 there. You can see the numbers up there. And uh, I believe we have one more. Some of the major expenses, uh, and they are necessary, we, we had a security group come in here called the K Street Group. Every year when we have the festival, we have to have armed security guards for protection. Because, God forbid, we've heard so much about mass shootings at public events. We wanted to make sure that we were safe and sound with registered and uh, qualified security guards. One was at the front, one was at the back. Uh, that came to $720. The insurance policy was $359. Uh, the entertainer we had was $600. And uh, food stuff, I'm, I'm assuming those are all the things we were selling, uh, comes out to a little less than $1,000. Uh, does anybody have any questions or concerns or insights with these numbers? I know. You've been asking for them, and we do have the numbers today to share with you. Anything that you'd like to point out or question? Anything? I'll be happy to answer questions. Going once, going twice. One thing I'd like to share personally, uh, a lot of people say this is very labor intensive to do the festival, and they say, how come we're not making more money because of all the labor. Well, part of our mission is not only to make a little money here, but, but a big part of the mission is to welcome the community onto our campus. So they get to know who we are. We extend a greater invitation for people to come and worship with us and get involved in our mission projects and so forth. So it really is a bridge that we're trying to build with this church and the community Kurt, I can put you on the spot. Kurt is living proof of somebody who came to us to the festival. We got acquainted, you, you and your family with me, and next thing you know, Kurt started worshiping here, and now they are integral members and very active volunteers of our church. That was a bridge we built through one of our festivals that we had. So Kurt's living proof of that, right? That it works, that we shake hands with those in the community. Any questions at all? I don't want to retain you any longer. Uh, anything at all? Anything. Very good. If, if you want to ask for further questions privately, you can come to me, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. As a lead into the food stuff, we still have some hamburgers and hot dogs that are downstairs frozen in the freezer. Next Sunday, we will be offering them for sale in the kitchen, so I just wanted to let you know about that. This is dismissal. Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.